He say, she say, we say, I say, hearing out them points of views when I see it my way. Yes, it goes, yes, it knows, maybe so's, probably not. Shills and coulds, do's and don'ts, your woods and wants is how you rock. Politicians and religions on your house or are you written? Is you married? Is you single? Met an interest when you mingle? Turn out to be someone you into. So, how long before the bed get wrinkled? When they trippin', is it time out or do you whip them? Opinions and decisions, hunches, intuitions May or may not get it, cause people's experience different Check the prejudice at the dope Speak the time you get the flow Tell the truth if it's sweet or sour Cause the hour we spittin' that fire Hello everyone, this is Spitting Fire coming to you with another one. Okay, you know the whole verbal disclaimer that I do, but if you don't, I'm going to give it to you again anyway. You must be over the age of 18 to visit my channel and listen to my videos, and do not allow anyone under the age of 18 to do the same, and please read the disclaimer in the description below. So we're going to be talking about some things. Early in 2019 and early in 2020, I did a breakdown on who knew who in the regards to this R. Kelly situation, okay? And I'm going to do a little bit different this time, but I'm going to break it down. And there was another blog blogger, uh, Prima Donna, who got in depth with it. But I'm going to do the other side of it and bring all that back to you for those who are new to my channel, okay? Because if you are new to my channel, there are some things you probably miss. You, it's so many videos that I've done going down the timeline may take you a little bit of time to see that particular video. And it's a little bit different because it's a little bit more uh, vague than what I initially did but this one gets more in depth okay this one gets more in depth and I didn't cover a lot of these things the last time as I put the connection together and this is only going to be a little bit less or right at 20 minutes and it's going to be part one part two may not come back to back but there will be a part two to this okay and I want to make sure you guys understand that and you have to make sure you listen to part one and understand what's going on before you can go on to listen to part two and I will try to have that in a couple days but probably not the very next day so we're going to get into the bottom of this okay so we know that January 2019 surviving R. Kelly aired okay there were a group of women who said that R. Kelly had abused them on Lifetime Network Okay, and then there were people who were celebrities that were in on this. But before we get into the celebrities, there were many different women who have worked with R. Kelly, was married to R. Kelly, and dated R. Kelly, and said that they were abused. They said they were held hostage. They said that they had to ask permission to eat. They had to pee in buckets. He kept them in the room all day. They had to have permission to go to another room to talk and everything else. They also said that they had to wear baggy clothes. But since all this has first came out in 2019, the whole story and the whole dynamic has changed. These women have came out on very many different platforms saying the very opposite of what they initially said in the Surviving Our Kelly documentary. Now, one of the person who founded all of this and started all these rumors um, on R. Kelly is one of the alleged accusers' father. Well, she's not really accuser. The father is accusing her for her saying that she was brainwashed in Stockholm Syndrome. However, she not saying that, okay? And so one of the fathers is saying that R. Kelly brainwashed his daughter, took her out of college, and wouldn't allow her to call home. The daughters were saying that that was not true, that they did speak to their parents, and they did call home, and they did come back and forth and everything. And there are videos out here on these YouTube streets that prove that the daughters were going home, coming back, people were leaving and coming back, okay? And But at the time, they said that they were held hostage. Now... We have broken all that down, but there are people out here who are very, very shallow. And because somebody said that they are a victim, they just want to believe that, and they don't want to believe the truth. People would rather believe a lie than the truth because the lie is entertaining. But we have one man's life on the line. You wouldn't want your damn freedom to be on the line on a lie. So we... As bloggers who know that this man has been done in jest and these victims are lying, we're going to break it down. So inside the documentary, there were celebrities also. Celebrity was talking about their encounter with 
R. Kelly. He done worked and known many different people. He has been on The Breakfast Club. They said that he had a relationship with Wendy Williams. And then, I don't even know where John Legend plays in it. From what I've heard, John Legend and R. Kelly never even spoke or even know each other. So I found it very ironic that John Legend would come on a docuseries based on allegations of what women have said to speak on a man that he doesn't know. Because allegations are allegations, okay? It doesn't mean that it is true. And people will often say that because it was going on for many years that that means it must be true. Or so many people come out, that means it must be true. Well, when you have a person that is wealthy and in the entertainment industry, you have a lot of women that comes out because everybody thinks they're going to get a bag. Well, the last time I talked to you about Wendy Williams and Charlamagne Tha God and John Legend being in Surviving R. Kelly and I broke it down, one of the things I did not tell you was the fact that it was said that Wendy Williams had a fling with R. Kelly. Now, we know she's notorious for airing out old flings, okay? She just re recently did it in her documentary about Method Man. But we know that Charlemagne the God is Wendy Williams' protege, okay? I did not tell you that in the first part of the things that, of the connection that I made last year. So, we know that Charlemagne the God is Wendy Williams' protege. So, of course, he probably forever in debt because that's how he got his stardom and became one of the main um, podcasters on The Breakfast Club. And he's also been accused of sexual assault, but that's been hidden. The very next day after Surviving R. Kelly aired, okay, aired, it was so funny that we have a prosecutor by the name of Kim Fox, Cook County Prosecutor, right? So, she said that the reason why she decided to come out the very next day after she seen the surviving R. Kelly was because she was a victim of sexual assault. Well, we know that in these YouTube streets, the many people that believe anyone that said that they are a victim of sexual assault, they believe it because of what happened to them. But I often told you guys, often, over and over and over again, that many of those people who claims to be victim of sexual assault never go after their predators, but they always want to go after someone else's claimed predator, okay? So... We know that in the corner is Michael Avenatti. Now, Michael Avenatti was very prominent into this whole takedown with R. Kelly. Actually, he was one of the alleged accusers, girlfriend turned accuser's father, attorney. Well, he since had his own legal rules, and we're going to be talking about that a little later, probably in the different parts as we unfold all of this, right? So, Michael Avenatti seemed to be putting a lot of pressure on Kim Fox about bringing R. Kelly on these charges. Now, we know that when it first came out, it took about four to six weeks for Kim Fox to even bring charges on R. Kelly, okay? And it was often said that Michael Evanati kept pressuring her to do so because the simple fact is he was representing the father. Now, if you don't know who Michael Evanati is, he was known for representing Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels was the one who was accusing President Trump of some ill will charges and suing him. However, he then was accused of ripping her off as he did a paraplegic and other people. And he tried to extort money from Nike. Well, this was the beginning of his downfall. So not only did he have his own issues to worry about, he was often trying to do and take down R. Kelly every chance he got. It was press conference after press conference after press conference, calling R. Kelly all kind of pedophile. Uh, there's many sex tapes. There's all this type of stuff, knowing that it was a scandal. But then in the Nike uh, extortion, he was on the audio indicating that 90% of the charges against R. Kelly was bogus. Well, we kind of starting to see that because the prosecutor in the federal case is delaying turning over evidence to the defense attorney. But before she can sit up there, okay, before she can sit up there and bring about charges, well, that was one thing that happened with her, okay? One of the things that happened was there was a monkey wrench thrown in it. Okay, before she charged R. Kelly, there was a monkey wrench. And at the end of January of 2019, Jesse Smollett got into some issues. It was said that he was a victim of a hate crime. And then the police did a whole lot of investigation, spent a whole lot of man hour and a whole lot of investigation only to find out and to believe that he staged all this for a bigger payout 
on the hit series Empire. Now, if you haven't known, Jesse Smollett is a very openly gay man. He's a gay man that is very advocate of the Times Up Me Too movement. Okay. And we know that he are and is friends with some high key people, particularly the Obamas and Tina Shashin, which was the chief of staff of Michelle Obama. But we're going to get into that uh, as well when parts two and three and stuff like this come out with these connections. But when Jesse Smollett case came out, it was just as big as the R. Kelly case because he indicated that men with mega hats, make America great again, were attacking him. That he said that they said gay slurs and he said that they said racial slurs. But well, when the police seen the uh, videotape, there were two black men. And they could not understand why would two black men call him an N-word. And then he said they pour bleach on him and all these type of things. They often asked him for his cell phone records. Well, they seen that they there were some things edited or changed or deleted or whatever you want to call it that wasn't there that should have been there that wasn't adding up to the phone records so if this brought a whole big fiasco to the smollett case which threw a monkey wrench and kim fox prosecuting him because of the key players she did not want to prosecute smollett however she had another big name brand person which was r kelly she didn't really too much focus on r kelly because she thinking that was a hit and miss it was all set and done. She didn't think that he would get out on bond. Well, this is the night that R. Kelly turned himself in. Okay, he was with his attorneys. He turned himself in. Someone posted bail for him and he was released. He was also arrested again shortly after that and also made bail. It wasn't until the July arrest by the feds that they would not get him a bond. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit more as well. Because we know that if you turned in your passport and you out on bond for one and you are a known public figure, there's not too many places that you can go. Okay. But we know that the judge in that federal case is being biased. Because of the simple fact is her connections with the Obamas. Now, I know you kind of figuring out what does the Obamas have to do with R. Kelly being charged and tried in the detained pending trial. Well, you have to stick around and find out. Okay. You might not find out in part one, but you damn sure will find out as I do more of these connections. Okay. Because it's important that you know that the Democratic Party, as I said, when I first did my uh, investigation, that they were behind this. So is the Me Too movement, Time's Up and everything else. Who endorses the Democratic Party? But the allies does as well. And that is the LGBT. Now you wonder what does the LGBT have to do with it? What does gays have to do with it? What does this have to do with it? It all has everything to do with it when there's agenda, when there's a political agenda, when there's underhanded agendas. There's so many different agendas into why this man is detained and can't get out. But let's talk about who else know who. Because we know that R. Kelly did a interview with this person called Gail. King, right? So when he did an interview with Gail King, it was a blow up and we will see that later on or whatever. But what we see in this picture is not only do we see Michael Avenatti, John Lemon, Hannity, and some others. Now you wonder, like, wait a minute. Okay, so let's go back. We see Surviving R. Kelly. We know that Wendy Williams and Charlemagne and John Legend was in him. And we know that Charlemagne was Wendy Williams' protege. Then we know John Legend was in the, the Surviving R. Kelly. Shortly after that, we know that the very next day, okay, the very next day, Kim Fox came out and said because she seen it for the first time is why she came out. And then Michael Avenatti was pressing her to file charges on R. Kelly. Right, and then a monkey wrench happened, and Jesse Smollett got into trouble, and then R. Kelly turned himself in. Well, in this picture, we see Michael Avenatti and Kim um, Gail King. So I'm thinking to myself, they already knew each other prior to all of his public announcements and all of his press conference. He already knew 
Gail King. And if he knew Gail King, I'm sure he knew Oprah Winfrey and some other key players, okay? So it sounds like to me they wanted who they wanted in office, and this was all a setup and a ploy to get them in office. Now, we're going to be talking about some of the things and some of the people who knew each other prior to this documentary, and when this documentary came out, they act as if they met each other for the first time. I found that to be very ironic that they will pretend like they just met each other during these interviews that you see on mainstream media such as CBS, The Morning Show, CBS, CNN, and everything else when it pertains to R. Kelly. Okay, So yes, you see Michael Avenatti next to Gail King and John Lemon. Now, Don Lemon had his own issues. He had his own issue with sexual assault. But because he's part of the LGBT community, that went away. Because we know that they own, with the Jewish community, the mainstream media. So now let's get back to uh, John Legend. Oh, and I forgot to tell you. Not only that Michael Avenatti knew Gail King, but it was just recently came out that R. Kelly's ex-publicist, Daryl Johnson, was her friend as well. Now, let's go forward to where we are now. And we see John Legend. John Legend also knew Gail King, as you can see the both the two photos, okay? And I'm thinking to myself, why would a man like John Legend speak on R. Kelly when he don't know him? Now I know that they're both musicians and I know that he's probably jealous of him, considering the fact that he's a looker, R. Kelly is, he's a ladies' man, R. Kelly is. He got the gift, R. Kelly does, and John Legend had to marry a flat but white girl, okay? Now, anyways, uh, John Legend knew Gail King, okay? And he was so happened to be in the surviving R. Kelly, and Gail King just so happened to be knowing Michael Avenatti and Daryl Johnson. Now, Daryl Johnson was supposed to be Michael uh, R. Kelly publicist, okay? And... He went up to them and said, hey, you seem like you need me in your life. So, I guess Steve Greenberg decided, okay, it was it. But I knew something was about that Daryl Johnson. He could never speak well when it comes to the media until he sat down with Gail King, okay, and said what he said so comfortably without any attorneys, especially his own attorney. So he wouldn't be sued knowing that he probably signed some type of NDA representing R. Kelly. But anyways, we knew that John Legend also knew Gail King. So you see how all these people connected? But at the end, I'm going to break you off with a little piece, okay, to sums up part one. Not only did he know Gail King prior to the documentary, he also knew this person right here. That's right, Kim Fox. As you can see... This is December 13, 2018, and this was John Levin, Legend post on Twitter, and this was Kim Fox reply. Okay, so we know. Let's go back to what we know for the last 20 minutes. We know that there was a docuseries, okay? Let's go back through this again. We know that there was a docuseries. We know that there were three celebrities inside the docuseries, Wendy Williams, Charlemagne Guy. And John Legend. And we know that Wendy Williams had so called of a fling with R. Kelly. And we know that Charlemagne the God was Wendy Williams' protege. So we found that that to be really odd. But there were other celebrities in it too. I'm going to get to them a little later. But we know that Charlemagne the God was accused of sexual assault. That so happened to go away. And we know that John Legend was in the documentary. Okay, then Kim Fox came up the very next morning, and we said that Evanati pressed, pressed her to press charts against R. Kelly, and he also represented his daughters, uh, the girl's uh, father, Angelo Clary, okay, and then the Monkey Wrench came in, which was John, uh, Jesse Smollett, R. Kelly turned himself in, and then Gail King knew Daryl Johnson and Michael Avenatti, and then John Legend knew Gail King and just so happened to know Kim Fox and endorsed her. Woo! That was a lot. I had to stop myself, you guys. I apologize for that. So pay attention to that. 
and make sure you see this again okay because I'm gonna stop it right here this is the end of the breakdown for the spin fire